that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. As we stand in His presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This morning is a beautiful morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at somebody next to you and say, this is a beautiful morning. It's a beautiful morning. Come on, come on, come on. Say that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Father God. Hallelujah. 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 You know, this week as we were preparing for the, for the worship and the Lord gave me the scripture in Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9. You know, I saw the host of angels singing and the scripture beautifully says that multitude, great multitude were gathered together. Let's see the scripture, Revelation 7, 9. It says, After this I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation. Look at your neighbor and say every nation. Every nation. And uh, say every tribe. Every tribe. Peoples. Say peoples. And tongues. Amen. Hallelujah. Standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes. Okay. Only one thing missing is white robe. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 White robes will be given. Already you have the white robe. Look at your neighbor and say you have the white robe. White robe is the, is the righteousness that you have in him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. With the robes with palm branches in their hands. And that's how they were worshipping. They were praising the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning, are you, are you ready to praise Him? Amen. Are you ready to praise Him? Amen. Hallelujah. Today, we are going to sing a different uh, language songs. Because many tongues. Everybody say many tongues. Yeah, many tongues. Yeah, different tongues. So we are going to worship the Lord in Hindi first. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you are familiar with Hindi? Okay. Yes. Let's go. I want all of you to worship with exuberance. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and sing as unto the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Nachunga, Gahunga, Padloke Sama, Hoshimena, Rahuga, Raja Hemaha, Nachunga, Gahunga, Padloke Sama, Hoshimena, Rahuga, Raja Hemaha, Nachunga. Look at 
that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of the grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of the grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Everybody close your hand, close your eyes and lift up your hands and just say, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you for who you are, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for who you are, for saving us, for picking us, for picking us up from the place where we were. And God, you have put us in a place. Hallelujah. How can we sing to you? What can we sing to you? What can we say of the goodness of your horse? There is nothing that we can do in return, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can, uh, behind the people, can you put some uh, stand before me? Sweet, 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 sweet
Once upon a time, with all unwanted things in our lives, there was there was leprosy kind of things, but the Lord gave His blood for us. Amen. Hallelujah. And He made us smart. Hallelujah. Kuttapanai Mantri. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, look at the neighbor and say He made us smart. Kuttapan means it's not a person. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why I called him. Amen. Hallelujah. He made us smart like Him. Amen. Hallelujah. He made us everyone smart like Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And not only that, He hugged us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. What a great Father's love. Hallelujah. The Father's love is great. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Libra Mankata Shaka Ba 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 Ba. Oh, hallelujah. 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 There is none like God. There is none like God. There is nobody. Hallelujah. No one is like Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Umay Pole Arunde. Hallelujah. Nilu Polina Varevaru. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, there is nobody who can do good for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Even as you sing it, mean it, my dear friend. Hallelujah. Come on, folks. Hallelujah. As a church, let us worship Him. Hallelujah. From the bottom of our heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I got a 
level whatever you are my dear friend hallelujah le bro kata sana na hantara shaka bahare ru foto shoko le me hentia shaka ba or hata shaka ba lord we are standing before the king of kings the lord of lords we are standing before the king of kings the lord of lords he is a great god he is a wonderful savior king of ages hallelujah gadol elohai hallelujah gadol elohai re bakasa ka ma 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 oh hallelujah oh frekena mahanto sheke labro kana hantara ba re mo satu shia kala mahantara ba oh jesus hallelujah how great is our god how wonderful he is amen hallelujah bli ma mo mo soto re 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 be seke rahante oh shaka mare oh thank you holy spirit Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 
Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, from Allah, Mama, Mama. Reheto Shana, Mama, Mama, Mama. Reheto Shana, Mahan, Tarabale. Likraman, Hose, Kelebebe. Refroba, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Let your praises increase. Let your praises increase. Let your worship, hallelujah. Bura from Ananana, so in a moon, Sandare, he has shana, mama, 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 holy balala, share, rihato, shamra, mama, co, bremi, me, 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 even as you're worshipping, hallelujah. Oh, friend, make it, even as we are going to partake in the Holy Communion. Come on, hallelujah. Pour out your heart to Him. Every burdens be lifted off. Every burdens be lifted off. Every burdens be lifted off. Every worries be gone. Every fear be gone. Every hallelujah. Oh, you are our anchor, Lord. Jesus, you are our anchor. You are our anchor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You've given us a name that is above all other names, the name of Jesus. Lord, and we thank you for that, oh, Father God. The name to which every single principalities will bow every tongue will confess every knees will bow 
such is the name of jesus can we just shout aloud jesus in this place hallelujah can we shout aloud jesus in this place oh the name of jesus which has the victory the name of jesus hallelujah which has the healing the name of jesus which has the power the name of jesus hallelujah to which the hell will tremble the name of jesus hallelujah which every principalities every power on this earth and heaven will bow the name of jesus hallelujah Hallelujah thank you father lord even as we speak the name of jesus every chain in our lives are just broken down in the name of jesus every sickness will leave in the name of jesus every depression will leave in the name of jesus every negative thing in the lives will leave in the name of jesus hallelujah there is freedom oh father oh thank you lord thank you father god thank you lord experience the richness in the name of jesus experience the power in the name of Jesus in your life experience Jesus personally for yourself hallelujah the name which can change you from inside out the name which can just transform your life hallelujah the name which has put an end to death the name which has plundered the hell the name which has taken the keys of hates and hates and hell and brought it to heaven hallelujah thank you lord thank you lord thank you father thank you lord thank you lord thank you jesus thank you lord thank you lord let the name of jesus be exalted in your heart today no other name no other name no other thing by the name of jesus let him be enthroned as king of your lives let him be enthroned as king of your heart and everything else in your life let it just take the precedence later let it take the second seat let it take the third seat let it just go back and let jesus be the center of your life today thank you father thank you lord for divine transformations that's happening in this place in the name of jesus today hallelujah thank you father god thank you lord thank you lord let's partake in the communion together i'm going to read from 1 corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 onwards for i received from the lord that which i also delivered to you that the lord jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed he took the bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me in the same manner he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the lord's death till he comes Therefore whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the blood and the body of the Lord but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup amen it's such an opportunity i just want you all to close your eyes wherever you are just take this moment with you and the Lord this is the divine privilege that we have in the house of the Lord that we eat of his body we drink of his blood which is so offensive which is so meaningless to the people outside but what a divine privilege to us for we know it is by this we have life if you have ever experienced difficulty in forgiving people let me tell you this table brings you to remembrance that god has freely forgiven you no matter what no matter what in your life no matter what no matter how grave how far you have walked away his forgiveness is abundant hallelujah thank you lord even as we partake in this today i just pray it will be so easy for you to forgive people you wouldn't take even 5 seconds to forgive one another offense will be offense will have no part in your life people may offend it might look offensive but you and i are an overcomer because it just needs no time for us to forgive because he has forgiven us freely 
just grab hold of that gift that God has given you. You don't have to be in the place where you feel that it's so hard to forgive. Today, it is your portion. Take it, live it, eat it and be free in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this privilege you've given us. We come before you, we humble ourselves and we want to thank you with all of our heart for Jesus and his death on the cross that we live and we live eternally, God. Thank you, Lord. As a grateful people, can we just partake of this communion together? Amen. If you have finished partaking, you can pass it on to the ashes. Amen. Hallelujah. I can see that you're busy. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You know, it is not, it is not just for the sake of telling I told that it's just going to take you five seconds to forgive people. I meant it. I meant it. It's freedom. If you can forgive freely, and if you can forgive faster, and if you can forgive easily. Amen. There is no other freedom in life than to forgive people. Turn to your neighbor beside and say, walk in freedom. Amen. If I had some 70 hands, I would have just come and shaken you all. And asked you all to tell. Can you just shake your neighbor beside and say, walk in freedom. We are on to a wonderful time of worship. Can we just uh, take our tithes and offerings in hands? Can we take our tithes and offering in hand? And we are going to give on to the Lord. We are going to worship by giving on to the Lord. It's a great privilege to give to God. Amen. Yes, we have two offerings today. Okay, we have a mission offering. We take it on every last Sunday of the month. Okay, the missions that which we do and uh, use for the various local and international missions. Let me read this for you. Proverbs 11.25 says, Whoever brings blessing will be enriched and one who waters will himself be watered. Are you ready to water? So that you can be watered. Proverbs 28.27 says, Whoever gives to the poor will not want, but he who hides his eyes will get many a curse. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there be food in my house. Amen. If you had been listening to what I read, you would be wondering, why did I read three verses? Generally, we read one verse, right? I read a verse to give on to God. I read a verse to give on to the poor. So I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, what belongs to God belongs to God. All right. And what you want to lend to the poor, do lend to the poor as God determines in your heart. Do not take it from what belongs to God and you become a God to another person. Okay, like this is something that I was taught in my Bible school. Very clearly they said, 10% belongs to God and many of us want to take the 10% and distribute it to various missionaries and various people. You don't become the God of others. Let God be God. You want to give to God, give from the 90% which belongs to you and 10% give to God which belongs to God. And you know what happens? The 90% of yours will be tremendously blessed and you will never lack in your life. Amen. Lord, we pray that every hand will be blessed tremendously even as they sow into your kingdom. Let there be no lack in their life. So Father God, for you are our good shepherd. In Jesus' name, we bless every cheerful and a good giver. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all of us said, Amen. Can we shout aloud, Amen. Even as the musician is playing uh, the song, you can feel free to pass your tithes and offerings in the bags.
please be seated, everyone. A very good morning, church. Thank you. We would like to warmly welcome everyone to church once again. It is definitely a joy to see all of you here today. All right, first up for our first announcements, just a gentle reminder once again that our regular service and Kingdom Kids takes place every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. The regular service is held here at Mount Olives, while Kingdom Kids will be held at the Function Room. So, did you all know that today is Youth Day? No? All right, so if you've got any teenagers sitting next to you, please warmly uh, wish them a very happy Youth Day, please. Or for any one of you who think that you're still a youth and a teenager, you may also wish them next to you. <laughs> okay, so our youths are actually going to celebrate this special day um, after service at JB. So truly do have a good time. You guys are really the goat of your generation. Do y'all know what's goat? Yeah. Teens, y'all know? Don't know? Oh my. Okay, so that means, you know, we know the age gap around here. Okay, so goat means, G-O-A-T means you guys are the greatest of all time yeah all right so happy you day once again okay so just a gentle reminder again that it is actually july tomorrow so a powerhouse prayer is happening on the 6th of july next saturday at 9 30 a.m so do join us as we soak in the presence of god additionally a promised message will also premiere tomorrow 1st of july at 5 a.m so be sure to stay tuned lastly Bible study has commenced and it will take place every Wednesdays at 8.45 p.m. Um, over Zoom. So please do join and be blessed. That's all I have for the announcements. Thank you, everyone. Let's put our hands together to warmly welcome Pastor. Praise the Lord. A very good morning to all of you. Good morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I think I have one more announcement to make, a couple of announcements. In fact, uh, as they get ready for that, can we... Here a testimony today. Uh, Shem has a testimony to share. Can we welcome him and uh, hear what he has to say? I told him he is the shortest and the crispiest and the sweetest. Yeah. So hopefully, yes. Come, come, Shem. <laughs> Morning, everyone. Yes. Sorry, I need to share. No, no. You, you should. You should. You can. You can. You can. Okay. So uh, firstly, I would like to thank God and thank the church for and thank everyone for praying for me and also the business that I'm in. Okay, so usually when I start my testimony at Powerhouse Prayer or be it in the cell group, I will always say that I'm not here to boast about what I've done, but I'm here to boast of what God has done because God has been always faithful and good. So as many of you know, last year on the 9th of March, Alpha Omega Wellness and Recovery Private Limited was incorporated with Director Jesus heading the company and I always said that I was just the worker. Okay, and it was a year of expansion where the business actually expanded. And who can tell me what's the promise word for this month? Yes, month of good gifts, right? So, and one more thing is out of two, 288,000 companies, SME companies in Singapore, Every year, there's this one government organization that, that will choose 500 companies based on their merits, their clients' reviews, the criminal records if they have, and many more to assess the company's background. But interesting part is they will check the financial background. And the financial background, the company needs to earn more than 500k a year, which it wasn't even a fraction of it that the company that I'm in, we earn. But the Holy Spirit prompted me to apply for this. And lo and behold, with Director Jesus sitting as the boss, Alpha and Omega Wellness and Recovery, as you guys can see, was awarded the SME 500 Singapore 2024. It's not over, it's not over. So after I received this, right, I called the organization and asked, is it correct that this is the company, is this all a different Alpha and Omega? Then the guy was like, bro, yes, the, it's your company which was award. And I just said, thank you, Jesus. I'm so grateful and thank God for the goodness and favor throughout. And if you're waiting for a breakthrough, if you're waiting for your gift, if you're waiting for healing or whatever that you're waiting for, people online and on site, 
Today is your day and you shout it out and say, I receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand. Amen. Praise God. One more time. One more time. Isn't he wonderful? Sometimes he takes the unqualified and he qualifies. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you are the one. You are one among them. Amen. Hallelujah. He qualifies us in a wonderful way. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So, uh, the announcement here is that we have, not this one. Do we have uh, the one for CMI? Okay. I can't make anything out of this, okay? But anyway, we can tell you at the end of the month, uh, we will let you know there is going to be uh, end of July, we are going to have a Bible verse, memory verse competition, yeah? So which day is that? August 4th, okay, August 4th. Look at your neighbor and say August 4th. August 4th, we have a Bible verse memory competition, okay? So uh, anybody can participate, young children to all the way adults, okay? No age limit, but you have been categorized into four groups. Uh, the, the kids will be doing through the, uh, through the kingdom kids, but the adults, please don't escape. Look at your neighbor and say, please don't escape. You know, last time only, yeah, youth also will have a separate group, okay? And the adults will be having, it's very less uh, verses to study, okay? Ah, yeah, you can see here. So there's one, two, three, four categories. Uh, so the adults will have Daniel chapter 11 and 12. This is more exciting, so I'm telling that. I'm telling you. So adults, you can start memorizing 11 and 12. Only 58. Everybody say only 58. <laughs> say only 58. Only 58 scriptures, okay? Only 58, yeah? Mind, mind you, if you don't memorize, maybe you will be left behind, okay? So better not, yeah? So, because Daniel 11.32 says, those who know their Lord will do great and mighty exploits for God. Those who know, the because this, this powerful scripture is there, in the end times, the enemy will come to flatter uh, the people in this world by sending deception. But those who know the Lord through the scriptures will do great and mighty exploits. That's the scripture there, 11.32, I already told you. So, so it is very important that we all learn and uh, together write it, okay? And then you have wonderful, exciting praises. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay? So you have wonderful praises from the scripture union who is conducting it. And also from the church will give you a, be a best gift for you. Okay? Look at your neighbor and say, don't miss the gift. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Okay. Children, make sure your, your parents also read, okay, with you. Okay, come, let's bow down our heads and pray. Father, we thank you. This morning you brought us for a wonderful uh, time of togetherness to worship you, to praise you and to hear your word. Today, this morning, we pray that, Lord, you will intervene in our lives. Lord, you are going to uh, send forth your healing, your healing anointing in this place. And God, you've called us specifically for this. This moment is a moment of healing for someone here. And God, anyone who is watching us on, uh, online, Father, we pray even as we break the bread, the bread, which is the manna, will, Father God, become a food for us. Entrance of your word brings life and light. So this morning, we ask you to shower your blessing on this word, that the words will come out with anointing, and God will set us free and give us understanding to hope in you and have faith in your word so that we can receive your healing. We praise you, we give you glory, we give you honor. This morning I pray and uh, I bring everybody under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Lord, their eyes of understanding be open. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and the people of God said, amen. amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. So Luke chapter 11 verse 9. So today, this is the last Sunday of the month. So we, as I was waiting on the Lord, you know, in the, in the year itself beginning, I said one of the Sunday we will have it as a healing Sunday. Amen. So this Sunday happens to be the last to fifth Sunday. So we are going to do it as a healing uh, Sunday. So expect for your miracle. Look at your neighbor and say expect for your miracle. Okay. We are going to learn about, uh, about healing and also we are going to walk in the healing. Amen. Walk in the healing. So Luke 11, 9 says, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will, be, you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Verse 13 says, if you then, 
though you are evil, how know, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit as to those who ask him? Right? So we said that this month is a month of uh, uh, good gifts and uh, we already heard testimony. I believe this good gift of healing will also become your portion. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's why, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, not sometimes, most of the time, even when we are sick, if we find the presence of God, if we are in the presence of God, that is where our healing fountain comes. Amen. Amen. It's not from walking away from the presence of God that you will be healed because then you have an alternative. But if you are going to move and be in the presence of God, that's where your healing fountain comes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I tell you, this morning as I was, uh, you know, yesterday night, I do not know, suddenly I was telling Emmanuel, my whole nose and my whole, uh, you know, the throat got congested. Congested and could not... I got fever suddenly. I do not know why. And uh, last evening, then I said, Lord, I'm going to preach about healing. And now my throat is so bad, I, I do not know. I have to lead the worship also. I was, uh, at, at the midnight hour, I was tempted to message, you know, uh, Emmanuel and say, Emmanuel, is it possible that we, we swap dates or something like that? We can make an arrangement. But the Lord said, hey, is that what your faith is? You know, I'm preparing for message, okay? Then the Lord said, can you lay your hands on your nose and pray? The moment I prayed, I do not know how the symptoms left. Hallelujah. 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 I'm perfectly well. Amen. Hallelujah. I tell you, you need to take authority. You need to take the word of God at its face value. Then you start manifesting healing. The presence and the word, both are important. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, both the word and the presence is important. Say that. Come on, come on, say that. Amen. Hallelujah. Both the word and the presence of God, both are important. Not one, not just one. Because many people think that, you know, they can do with one. Either word or presence. You know, when they pray, they, pray, they, they have the presence of God. But I tell you, we, when we do that, we can't experience the fullness of God. The fullness of God. The fullness of God is in his word and as we read the word of God, as we study the word of God, as we stay in the word of God, that brings forth a presence that is going to bring deliverance. Hallelujah. Amen. That is what it brings uh, healing. As we see in Jesus' ministry, Jesus said that he was preaching, teaching and healing. Amen. He was doing what? Preaching, teaching and healing. These are the three things he always did. Preaching, he's healing, and uh, sorry, preaching, teaching, healing, and also deliverance, okay? In other, uh, you know, uh, when we were studying, we jokingly say PhD, okay? That means preaching, healing, and delivering, okay? Preaching, healing, and delivering. That way we can remember. But Jesus always did that. So we don't want to be like the people who will only hold on to one thing, but we'll hold on together, and we need to pursue both the presence of God, which gets rooted in the word of God. Amen. Which gets us rooted in the word of God. So presence of God is only accelerated by the word of God. If we don't have the word of God, we cannot be accelerated into the presence of God. Word of God helps us to come into the presence of God. Presence of God. So both the word of God and presence of God is important. Amen. That means you have to meditate until the point that where you will know that the presence of God is filling you. Amen. He starts to speak to you. You're not just casually reading. You're not casually you know, brushing through the scripture, but you know God is speaking to you. Amen. When God is speaking to you, you are already in his presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. That's the way we find out. So we, And one more thing that I want to tell you, we can't have the presence of God Everybody say, we can't have the presence of God outside the word of God. Outside the word. If you're not in the word of God, then only we are having what is called as feelings. Hello? Have you ever sensed that? You feel goose bump, you feel like as if something is happening. If you're not in the word of God, look at your neighbor and say, you're not in the word of God. What you're having is just merely feeling. Maybe once upon a time you had some feeling attached to the presence of God, then you feel like, oh, goose, goosebump. Oh, I felt something coming upon you. That's 
That's not real. The real presence of God comes when you're in the word of God. It's accompanied when in the word of God. Amen, hallelujah. You get that? You get that? How much more I have to be in the presence of God in order to get rooted and to be, be, uh, be pushed into the zone of his presence because his presence is his word. Yes? Hello? Who is Jesus? Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word. That means when we are reading the word of God, we have his presence there. Yes or no? It's a very different feeling. It's a very different feeling. So this morning, I want to tell you that both of us, I mean all of us as we study the scripture, may the presence come here to heal you. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, be healed. Be healed, be healed, be healed. healed. Amen, hallelujah. This morning, I'm believing for healing. Amen, hallelujah. Whether it is cold, whether it is fever, whether whatever it is, okay? Yeah, we can be healed. You can also take a Panadol and get healed. It's up to you. Amen, hallelujah. I'm telling you the free and easy, cost-effective way. Go to his presence and not take medicine. Yeah. I said something. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because God has kept this way. Okay, let us get into the word. James chapter 1, verse 17. James, James chapter 1, verse 17. I have a lot of scripture to give you this morning and also pray for you. James chapter 1, verse 17. What does it say? Every good gifts come and every good gifts and perfect gift is from above and comes down from father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Everybody say every good gift. Every good gift and every perfect gift. Everybody say perfect gift. Every good gifts and perfect gift. Yes, we are talking about the month of good gifts. Yes, the father gives what? Come on, say that. Good gifts. Father gives good gifts. Evil fathers also give good gifts. Hello? The evil fathers know how to give good gifts. Heavenly Father gives much more of the good gifts. So God here says, every good gifts come from the Father. That means above who is seated? Father in heaven. Amen? Father in heaven. Father of lights. So healing is one of the good gifts. Amen. Healing is one of the good gifts. I want to tell you. God wants all his children to be healed. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, look at your neighbor and say, God wants you to be healed. God wants you to be healed. Yes, God wants you to be healed. That is, the, that is his perfect will. In whatever way, okay, whatever fashion, whatever way that he, he, you, you believe him, he can heal you. You know, many people say, you know, uh, sometimes doctors heal. Doctors only perform surgery. Doctors only give medicine. Thank God for them. They are intelligent people. God created them. But I tell you, the healing comes from the Lord. Amen? Yes? Yeah. The doctors give their best way of treating the tissues, uh, treating the organs and so on and so forth. But I'm telling you, even if the doctor performs the surgery, only it's God who heals. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You, you scratched your, your elbow when you're going in, in, the, in the lift or somewhere on the, on the, against the wall. Or you fell down and you scraped your knee. You didn't do anything about it, but it got healed. Do you realize that? Who brought that healing? Jesus. Come on, say that. Jesus. God has already kept the nature and the characteristic for healing within you. Hallelujah. That's why a nail peels off, it it grows again. God has already given the ability for the body to be healed. But I'm asking you, how come then uh, then the healing, you know, uh, then people don't believe in healing? A God who's already set within a man's ability, within the body's capacity, within the tissue's ability to self-heal, self-heal. Self-heal. I'm coming at a very important point. So therefore, good gift of healing is what God wants you to have. Amen. 
God wants you to have. And how do we get this healing from the scripture? This means we are talking not about the other means of getting healed by, by natural means, which is not wrong what I'm saying. But sometimes there are hopelessness that will come where even the, the limitations of the medical, medical field or limitations of you know, the, the surgical means uh, 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 cannot heal you at all. Okay? Cannot heal you. There is no way that the doctors say, all we, we did everything what we could. What they say, trust in God. But how do we get to that place and receive our healing? Amen. What I'm calling this as a spiritual healing. Amen. Spiritual, not just in the spirit, but spiritually getting healed in our bodies. Because every healing begins with our spirit man. Amen. You first receive it in the spirit, then it manifests in your Flesh, it manifests in your flesh. So, how do we do that? Luke chapter 5 verse 15 says, look at King James Version, or King James Version, Luke 5 15 it says, but so much, but so much the more went their fame abroad of Jesus and great multitude came together to hear and to be healed. Hallelujah. Everybody say to hear and be healed. So one of the best way of to receive God's healing in this realm is by hearing and healing. Amen. Hear and be healed. Look at your neighbor and say hear and be healed. Hear. That means hearing God's word, hearing his voice and be healed. Hearing God what he is speaking and be healed. Be healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. So today, I surely believe that as you hear the word of God, the word is able to hear every one of us who is able to believe in his word and take hold of the promise. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is the word. Amen. I, I know because uh, sometimes there is a lot of question comes when we talk about healing. You know, uh, I, I, I was just thinking, you know, the, when I was working in the hospital, there are many surgeries that takes place. Not all of them heal, get healed the same way. The doctors also cannot say. We can't say random choice, yeah? It happens, it may not happen. If we say science is so accurate and exactly delivers the same way, A plus B is equal to ABC or A, A plus B is equal to AB. Oh, it's a wrong equation. Oh, sorry. No. Please pardon me. I'm just giving you an example, okay? Don't, don't ask me A, A square plus B square plus 2AB. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying, okay? So I'm just saying a simple equation of A plus B is AB. Hello? Yes or no? It is not so simple as that. It's not so simple as that. Every time you, you put the sum, you put the max in the same answer, you derive it. No. It is not. It's not. Something, ex something supernaturally takes place. Hallelujah. Amen. Something supernaturally takes place. Same heart surgery, same condition, same kind of block, same place, same placement, same vessel, but one person got healed and the other person died. So I say, God is the one who heals all the time. Whether they went through the surgery or not, God is the one who was holding them in the place of healing. Hallelujah. It was He all the time letting them not slip away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 20 to 22. My son, give attention to my words, incline your ears to my saying, do not depart, let them depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Amen. So how do we receive this healing by hearing? Is by mainly you hear the word and you be healed. Yes or no? Hear the word. Everybody say word. Everybody came to him for what? To hear the word and be healed. Everybody say, hear the word and be healed. Hear and be healed. So we hear the word of God. That means this is not a generally hearing. This is an internal hearing. Amen. An inward hearing. Amen. And that means I'm telling you, it is a rhema word that comes forth towards you. Hallelujah. You know it is for you and you take hold of it. It's a rhema word. It's a rhema word. That means God speaks. And suddenly some enlightenment comes to you. Suddenly an understanding comes to you and you hold on to the word. It can apply to any part of your life. 
not just be healing, it can be a miracle, it can be a sign, it can be anything, but today we are talking about healing. So he speaks, there is a lot of scriptures that is talking about healing, but as we meditate that scripture, suddenly God's voice becomes yours, amen. amen. A rhema word comes forth you, the written word becomes a logos word, sorry, a logos word becomes a rhema word, a written word becomes a spoken word. Oh, that which means, look at this, the health to all their flesh. You know, Jubilee version, there is one Bible called Jubilee version. It says, for they are life unto those who find them and medicine to their flesh. I like that. Look at your neighbor and say medicine. Medicine. Oh, medicine. That means I can take the word of God like a medicine. Amen. Amen. Can you see that? You know, uh, know, advanced uh, uh, countries like what we are living in the first world where, uh, you know, Next door is a clinic, you know. Below your block is a clinic. We don't find the need for it. But I tell you, you go to the places where there is absolutely no medical help. There are people who trust in the Lord. There are people who just wait on the healing to take place. That's why we hear that great miracles like, you know, suddenly a child died. You know, something happened. An infection came. The the baby was dead. Somebody came and prayed because there is no medical help. And then they had faith by hearing the word and they got healed. Hallelujah. So I'm telling, it is not God's issue. It is, it is the mankind's issue. Hello? So are we seeking that kind of a help from the Lord? I'm not saying, I'm not saying and cornering you, you should do that. Okay? But I'm telling you, God has kept a way to be healed. And you can live in the divine health all the time. Amen. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you getting something? Yes. yes. So, most, mostly the word health, healing. Oh, sorry. One translation, as we said, you know, the medicine is the body. That means I can take the healing scripture and I start eating that like a medicine. We say sometimes, you know, uh, you know, Charles Chaps says this way, you take the healing scripture and uh, you know, you start to hear that over and over and over. What are you doing? You are consuming this word which is the medicine for your spirit and it becomes manifested in your flesh. Amen. Those days I know very much when, when my wife was very sick in the hospital, many days hospitalized, you know, doctors were running frantically not knowing what kind of treatment because they have seen a weird uh, uh, eradicated disease here, okay, and the doctors forgot about the disease and then they were running here and there. Every, every time, you know, 12, 24 hours, I remember putting those songs of healing scriptures and those days, you know, and, uh, and hearing that over and over, over and over. And those scriptures started to make sense. Amen. Hallelujah. And many times, multiple times, uh, I I know Shruti has been healed that way. Amen. Amen. See, every time when she has something, she will always, I know that she will constantly, you know, uh, start to play the healing scriptures. That means I know that she is praying for healing. Praying for healing. I like that way. But I'm not like that. I'm not like that. I don't hear the healing scriptures like that. I, I take hold of the scripture and I sometimes speak over it. That's what God uh, taught me. Each one it will differ. But general way, God has given, take the word as a medicine. Look at your neighbor and say, take the word as a medicine. Take the word as a medicine. When we start taking the word as a medicine, there is a healing. Okay, number one. First we need to clear something here. Is, God, is God's will for everybody to be healed? Number one point. I'm going to tell you, God always wills his people to be healed. It is God's perfect will. That means healing is God's will. Many people, even well-meaning Christians, think God is not, uh, it is not God's will that everybody be healed. Or they think that, you know, uh, that, you know, maybe the healing is not for them, but for somebody else. Okay, somebody else. So that is a big hindrance. Look at your neighbor and say, that's a big hindrance. It's a big hindrance. Why? Because the biggest hindrance for the healing and living in divine health is not knowing that my father wants me well and be healed and walk in divine health. It's ignorance. It's not wrong, but it's ignorance. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not malice, it's ignorance. That means we need to know that God wants, my father wants a good gift for me. My father intends good things for me. My father wants me completely be healed. Not partially be healed, but completely be healed. 
My father wants me to walk in divine health. Do you mean that for your children? If even you evil fathers mean that way, how much more your heavenly father does that? Hallelujah. He wants this good gift of healing to be for every children. Every children. So healing is God's will. So for that we need to know healing is a good gift. Healing is a good gift. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, we read that. I'm not going to read that again. But Luke chapter 11, verse 13 says, you see that. If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Interestingly, Luke says it's the Holy Spirit. But Matthew chapter 7, in verse 11 it says, he says it is a good thing. You look at that. Yes or no? How much more will your heavenly father in heaven give good things? Oh, Holy Spirit is a good thing. Yes or no? But now my question is, some people also say Holy Spirit is over. Holy Spirit move is stopped. There is no more move of the Holy Spirit. Do you agree that? No. Never. Holy, in fact, we are in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. We are in the move of the Holy Spirit. It is no more that day. Hey, this is all over with the, with the apostles' time. You know, the apostles finished everything. No, 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 no. It is happening even now. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. That means it is a good thing. Everybody say good things. Good gifts is equal to Holy Spirit. Good gifts is equal to any good things in life. Healing is a good gift. Healing is a good gift. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Look at Acts chapter 10 verse 38. What is, what is here uh, Paul, I mean Paul is writing. You see how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing. Did you see that? Oh, that means the good thing that Jesus was doing is healing. Hello? Do you see that? The good works that he was doing is healing. He was doing good works as well as healing people. Amen. Yes. Oh, will that healing become good gifts or not? Yes. Healing is a good gift. Healing is a good thing. Now, many people speak and live as if it is something bad. Oh. Healing is a good thing. Look at your neighbor and say, healing is a good thing. Yes. Is sickness a good thing? How do you say that? Is, is sickness a good thing? Not at all, right? But healing is a good thing, yeah. If, 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 if healing is not, uh, if healing is a good thing, then sickness should be a bad thing. A heavenly father or even human father will not want his children to have bad things. Any bad things, including the sickness. How can we say that God allowed this and God, God is teaching me something new here? You know, there are people here he, uh, here saying, you know, some people say, you know, God only kept that people like that. Hello? Hello? Yes or no? You know, God will give me more grace if I have it. I will tell you a better way to get more grace. Be humble. Be humble. Look at your neighbor and say, be humble. That's a better way. Rather than get sickness and be humble, get more grace. The Bible says those who are humble, give more, get more grace. Yes or no? So then I would say better ways to receive that. Not necessarily you need to receive some disease and then say, Lord will make me, give me more grace to overcome. I say, Come on. Don't, let's, let's speak scripture here. Hello? Let us come in terms with scripture. I'm not going to arbitrarily say things, okay? Alright. Then, uh, then some people say to glorify God. They will come to that Matthew chapter 9. I know, oh that man, that young boy who was from the, from the childhood, he was, you know, he was, uh, he was blind. Jesus said for glory of God. They take that particular thing and mislead, divide that and they will say, I say, by sickness he was not glorifying God. By the healing manifestation he was glorifying God. Hallelujah. He will be glorifying God when he got healed. Amen. Amen. 
that means i will say god is able to even heal those who are born blind hallelujah that means jesus in the work of healing those people which the world has completely said it is impossible hallelujah because jesus very clearly says what was impossible for man it is possible with god amen oh therefore god says very clearly what is the world cannot do i tried by all means that lady like the 12 year old bleeding lady you know for bleeding for 12 years no she went to all the top physicians but cannot get any healing but then she she spent all her life all her wealth in that uh, process of healing but finally comes to jesus knowing that jesus is walking away she heard she heard that he is coming then she went and touched the hem of the garment and she was healed hallelujah amen. hallelujah amen hallelujah so number one i want to tell you god's will is for us to be healed amen, amen. number one god's healing is god's will jesus said that let's let's see matthew chapter 8 verse 2 and 3 look at that this is man who when jesus came from the mountain behold a leper came and worshiped him saying lord if you are willing you can make me clean look at what jesus responds jesus put out his hand and touched him and said i am willing amen everybody say i am willing jesus is willing so it is not just for merely the leprosy i am telling you any kind of condition he is willing amen if it is depression he is willing to heal you if it is some kind of you know i felt as i was praying you know last night the lord said there are people who are here who has some skin condition i am telling you the lord is healing you this morning if you are having some kind of a skin condition which which is under your skin you cannot even you know you're hiding you're trying to you know it causes itchiness and so on so for the lord said if you believe and you're going to touch the hem of the garment this morning god is able to heal that hallelujah hallelujah there are people who who are who are having you know this kind of rib pains anybody have a rib pain here that means the pain over this side and this side the lord said god is going to heal okay now you are in the listening mode huh okay as the word of god has been released you receive it in faith amen hallelujah hallelujah blood condition blood condition any blood condition you know the lord said he will heal that amen if there is an intestine tissue uh, sorry issues uh, especially some markers have gone very high and the doctor said you need to repeat the bloods i i want to tell you the lord will heal you if you believe him amen, amen. hallelujah amen hallelujah some kidney stones amen look at james here uh, kidney stones also god is able to heal heal thank you lord thank you lord james chapter 5 verse 13 to 16 16 16 is anyone among you suffering let him pray ah huh? if anyone who is cheerful let him sing psalms if anyone among you sick let him call for the elders of the church let them pray over him now my question is if if god if if healing is not god's will would he ever want you to call the elders and pray for it come on what a waste of time some more you are going to call the elders somewhere living and say please come and pray for which you are not going to be healed hello illa pastor nadanda nadakum some of you are saying that maybe it, it may happen yeah probably yeah probability probability you all you are very mathematicians i think yeah probability la kanakku potu paathu but but here you see is anyone among you sick let him call the elders of the church let him pray over him anoint him with oil in the name of the lord the prayer of faith everybody say prayer of faith that means there is a connection between healing and faith hallelujah there is a powerful connection and a bridge between healing and faith healing and faith healing and faith i do not know what background you come from you may you you may you, you are just now this time is what you are hearing this kind of a teaching or maybe you been uh, hearing this over and over i want to tell you jesus is the healer amen, amen. not the person there is no magic uh, power or no higher power with any of the people it is jesus who heals amen, amen. jesus his name is jehorafa 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 can we go to that scripture exodus chapter 15 the first very time where jesus is uh, uh, is showing himself as a healer god healer god look at that look at that exodus 15:26 if you diligently heed the voice of the lord your god and do what is right in his sight 
Give ears to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of the disease on which you, uh, on you, which I have brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes or no? Yes. This is the first time in the word of God, God is revealing himself as I am the one who heals you. The, the compound name, there are many compounds named for God. One of the name is this Jehovah Rapha. Everybody say Jehovah Rapha. Rapha means heal, healer. Rapha, Rapha means healer. Healing, health. Jehovah Rapha, that means God. I am God is the healer. When, when God asked Moses, what, what should I say to the people? He said, I am that I am. Yes or no? That means I am Jehovah, I am. So he's saying, I am that I am. Now he replaces the I, one of the I am with I am, Rafa. Amen. Hallelujah. Like before he said, I am Jireh. Amen. Hallelujah. So God, his first time he's revealing himself as the God who heals. What is he saying? Previously, the people in the Egyptians, they were, they were doing wrong. Okay, They were against the people of God. So I brought in forth some disease. That means he permitted these conditions over them. Okay, he, I permitted all these conditions so that they will have a wrath or a judgment. Okay, it is based on the judgment. But later on he calls them, I, if you are going to hear my voice, everybody say hear. How do you get healed? Hear. Keep on hearing. Hallelujah. How faith comes from? Faith comes from hearing. Hearing by the word. Come on, say that. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word. Hallelujah. Faith comes by Hearing, hearing by the word. So as you keep diligently hearing his voice, then God says, I will not put those diseases. That means those diseases, I will make sure it will not come over you or your children, but you will be healed. Hallelujah. And this is very powerful because the Lord said, for I am the Lord who heals. Many people stop there. They think only Jehovah Rapha is a, just Jehovah healer, right? Jehovah Rapha. Jesus, Jesus is the healer. God is the healer. But he says, I am the Lord who heals you. Everybody say you. People say when, when it comes to healing, they will always say the, the person in the third row, pastor, they will be healed. Hallelujah. The person next to me will be healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, the person who is there may be healed. The first row is a more intelligent and more you know, holy person. They will be healed. I just let the, let the angel of the healing pass by. I am so generous, you know. Hello. Some generous people say Amen. See, generous people are saying, Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know? Now, I am telling you, you be a little bit selfish in this area. Hallelujah. The Lord heals me. Hallelujah. Say that. The Lord heals me. Look at your neighbor and say, The Lord heals me. Look at that word. I am the Lord that healeth you. The you is the stress man. Come on. I am the Lord who heals you. The Lord who heals you. Wow. It raises a faith. It arises a faith. And look at this word. We, we just saw James chapter 5, right? James chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. The word there, it says, uh, you know, many people say, uh, you know, the prayer of faith will save the sick. Okay, save the sick. Then, then they're talking about some maybe salvation, pastor. It is not about healing. You know, some people will come to a conclusion and they will say, the prayer of the sick, uh, uh, you know, faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him. Raise him means during, after death, maybe raise him. No, no, no. That's all wrong, okay? The word uh, save is zozo. Everybody says zozo. Zozo means to be healed. To be healed. That means to recover from the condition. That's what it means. Zozo means to heal, to preserve, make well, make whole, to cure and to make well again. I like that. Okay. Then the word, uh, the, the word raise means it is not raising from the dead. The word raise in Greek it's called egiro. Okay, Egiro. Everybody say Egiro. What is Egiro means? Egiro means a person who was bedridden, right? No strength in the body because of the sickness. Then God says, I will raise you to make you stand. Hallelujah. That means this passage is very clearly saying he is the Jehovah Rapha who heals. Amen. That means God wants every one of us to be healed. Amen. Whatever condition that you may have, whatever sickness that you may have, it is irrespective of that, God is able to heal us. Amen. 
That's why he said, come and, and pray about that. So Matthew chapter 8 verse 16 here says, look at this, Jesus healed everyone. That says, when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed and he cast out the spirit with the word and healed. Come on, what is the next verse? All. Everybody say all. Did he heal everybody? Irrespective of what the chosen souls, I, I, you know, he, he, I, I can only say that and stop there, okay? Doesn't matter. The word of God says, God healed everyone. Amen. Yes. Amen. Everyone. everyone. Do you want to believe that? Yes. Do you want to believe that God is able to heal everyone? Yes. Yes. God's will is for us to be healed, number one. Number two, God heals everyone. Yes. Everyone. Look at your neighbor and say, God heals everyone. First of all, we need to come to that ground of this faith in order to receive that healing. Amen, amen. If we, if, we, if we are made sure these two things are okay, then the third thing that I want to tell you is what I wanted to say to you. Amen, hallelujah. The third thing is the most important thing and I'm going to finish that in a few, few minutes, okay. There is a tense for this healing. Everybody say there is a tense. You know there is a tense. Tense means the present tense, the past tense, the future tense, okay. The time signature, right. The tense for healing. Healing is not never future. It's never future. If you're thinking that hopefully one day I'm going to be healed, then you keep hoping it. I'm telling you. Even for the healing that is to take place in future, you need to believe now. Hallelujah. You need to believe first now, then your healing will manifest later. Amen. Irrespective of when it manifests, your belief and your faith is now. Look, uh, sorry, hey, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Look at that. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. We know all this passage. Okay, everybody say. Now, now faith is substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Oh, hallelujah. So healing is not seen yet, but I have the evidence. Where is the evidence? Where is the evidence? The evidence, the witness is in your spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. That means you know, I have received the healing. I'm not going there, but you read that lady who was touching the garment. And the moment she touched the garment, she knew in her spirit. See, the word of God says, when she touched the garment, she knew something happened to her and she got healed. Amen. Hallelujah. And everybody say, now faith. faith. What faith is that? Faith. What faith is that? Now. now faith. Everybody say, now faith. Now faith means not future faith, not past faith. It is now faith. That means presently I am healed. Hallelujah. But pastor, how do you say that? How do you say that? I'm going to give you that couple of scripture here. And look at Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5. For time's sake, I'm reading 5. It says, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Everybody say, are healed. See, in the Hebrew and the Greek test, the tense are very important. In fact, the Hebrew doesn't even have the future tense. Everything is past or present. Only two tense is in Hebrew, okay? But now look at that. It says, we are healed. That means Jesus died on the cross. He bore the sickness. He, he died for all our iniquities. And the Bible says, by his stripes, we are healed. That means cur currently we are healed. Amen. But, but what happens is Matthew chapter 8 verse 7 it says, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. You see that. He himself took our infirmities and bore. You know Matthew 8 17. Matthew 8 17. So it says that Jesus when he came, it is to fulfill the what prophet Isaiah has spoken. What was Isaiah pro, uh, prophesied? Isaiah prophesied that by Jesus' tribe we are I mean, the, the one who will come, the lamb's stripe, we are healed. So Jesus came and he proved on the present. Amen. Hallelujah. He proved on the present. But Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 2, 24, when he writes about this instance of Jesus coming and doing a healing ministry and going, look at what he says. Who himself bore our sickness in, sorry, in sin in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sin, might live for? Righteousness by whose stripe? Oh, everybody say where healed. What is that? Where healed is what tense is that? 
past tense. That means what? It is already done. When was it done? On the cross 2000 years ago, I, I was healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big hand. That means the healing is not going to happen. 2000 years ago, Jesus died on the cross and he put a full stop to every kind of disease. And because all the sickness he took upon himself. Amen. Oh, he healed me. That means maybe in this future, I look upon to what Christ has done and I say, it is already a done deal. Amen. It is finished work. It is finished work. I was healed a long back. I mean, hallelujah. So when I know that, that means I start believing now that I, I am healed now. Irrespective of the manifestation, I'm starting to stand in this faith that now, though I don't see the evidence, but I'm already healed. Hallelujah. Because of what Christ has done. That's what faith gives you power. Amen. Faith gives you power. Faith gives you an avenue to receive this healing from the Lord. Because as you, maybe one time you receive it, you may not get it because you are so, so confused. But you constantly take this word and you start meditating and meditating and meditating. Look at the close look of what the word of God says. He says, oh, that means he already did it on the cross 2000 years ago. I was healed that time itself. Now, now when I know that I'm healed, I start to manifest that. Amen. Hallelujah. Faith, now faith arises in me. Now faith arises in me. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Risha Kala Bahantaraba. So now faith will produce healing now. Amen. Now faith will produce now healing. Amen. If we were healed, then I am healed. Say that if I was healed, I am healed. Now, yes or no? If I was healed long back, I am healed? Now. Look at your neighbor and say, I was healed, therefore I am healed? Now. I am healed now. Look at your neighbor and say, I heal, I'm healed now. I'm healed now. That is a very important thing. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Healed. So how, how does this all uh, tie together? I just want to tell you one story in the, in the Old Testament. It's not a story. It's a law of God. Okay. Exodus, you write down the scripture because I'm going to explain to you. I'm not going to elaborate to you because of the time sake. But maybe one time I will have more time to elaborate. But these days, you know, we have to be shorter, okay? Uh, Exodus 23, 23, write it down. 23, 23, Lord is saying one beautiful uh, way. In Exodus 23, 23, he says, For my angel will go before you and bring you into the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Canaanites, and the Hittites, Jebusites. All these ites, you see there, these are spirits. Everybody say spirits. Each spirit signifies one, one thing. Okay? Hittites is a, it's a spirit which, which keeps you under, smaller. Always makes you keep smaller. Okay, there are a lot of meaning to that. Okay? Jebusites is a spirit of depression and oppression. Jebusite, okay? Amorite is a spirit of empty talkers. They will only talk, but nothing. Okay, empty talk. The spirit of empty talking, yeah? Spirit of... Patriking, oh, wow, 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 they talk. Okay. Philistines are the spirit of weakness. Philistines are the spirit of weakness. Okay, look at that. So, here, come to Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10 now. Verse 22 to 26, there is an instant which is given here. That means Joshua, God says, you go and defeat the kings, the five kings, okay? There are five names given, okay? Eglon, Jerusalem, Hebron, and J Jarmuth. All these five kings, Lashes. All these kings, you bring them and you put them on the floor. You go call the people to stamp them on their neck. Yes or no? Okay. The Lord says, captain to the men and war and went with him. Come near and put your feet on there. Next of these kings, and they drew near and put their feet on their necks. So Joshua then did what? He, he, he took these bodies of these people and hanged them. Look at the last words. Afterwards, Joshua struck them and killed them and hanged them on the five trees. And they were hanging on the trees until evening. Oh, some of you getting some bulbs here. This is the Old Testament way in which how you treat uh, somebody with power. Kings had power. Everybody say king had power. Kings had power. All the power of the land belonged to the king. Every spirit that means every spirit that was occupying. Spirits are territorial spirits. All of them belong to the king. These are the heathen kings. These are not godly kings. These are heathen kings. That means they are supposed to kill these people and hang them until the evening. So that the spirit will go inside. All the spirit of the power will get into them. 
And once it is there, by evening they should bring down the body and bury them so that they will not go out again. But if, you are going, if they are going to let the body hang there for the night, the spirit will go out, it will do even nastier thing. Remember now Jesus what he said, if you don't keep, when, they, when the seven spirit, I mean one spirit goes and if it is not clean, swept clean and then it comes back into seven times and then occupies the place, yeah. Now, if this is the case, what happened in Deuteronomy chapter 21, you look at that. And anyone who hangs on the cross is a accursed one. Yes or no? For he who is hanged is accursed. That means cursed of the law. Mark chapter 15 says, now watch with me carefully. This is the powerful truth that I want you to get this morning if you have not received anything else. Jesus, who is the king of kings, who was in the flesh form, was killed, crucified, and he was also hanged on the cross. Do you know that before evening his body was brought down? Matthew chapter 15 records that. That means when he died on the cross, he took all that spirit of infirmities, he took all the spirit that was bothering the people, he took, he took care of all the, all the enemies against the people of God, all those spirit that was oppressing and depressing and so on and so forth, he took everything, bore upon himself and then when he brought down on the, from the cross, from the tree and he was buried by the evening, hallelujah! Never to come back. Hallelujah. I will have no power over the people of God. Hallelujah. That which means the healing belongs to you. That the enemy cannot steal, my dear friend. This morning, can you all stand up to the feet? I am done with the message. Hallelujah. If you believe that, I tell you, there is healing this morning. Healing from every oppression. Healing from every depression. Healing from every kind of sickness. Whatever it is. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, when the faith comes, you know in your, in your, in your spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, long back when you all know the story, Jonathan, when he was very, very affected, you know, afflicted, and he was in the ICU, the doctor said, no hope, no hope. You know, that night when we were all praying, when the scripture came, it said, the boy is healed. The boy is healed. That's the one word. And I saw an image of the hand of uh, Jesus between the head and the vacuum. Amen. Hallelujah. The next few hours when they went and checked, uh, the boy was completely healed. Amen. Hallelujah. No, no affection to the brain. No affection to the brain. No affliction to the brain. This morning, it is nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. That day, more, that day when we also told these people, hey, this boy, don't worry about him. He will be the most intelligent boy. You know, now today, how many, how many languages he speaks? Already three, four languages he speaks. No, he, he, can, he can speak in Chinese also. He's, a, he's an intelligent boy. Do you agree? If you talk to him for a few minutes, you, you know that he's an intelligent boy. God can take something that is collapsed, crushed by the enemy, but he can lift and he can give life. Hallelujah. This morning, if you believe that, hallelujah. Lebra manta shaka baba, hallelujah. Lift up your hands towards heaven and say, Lord, give me faith to be healed. This morning, I believe in you. I trust in you. Likra manto sheke lebehenta raba. Ribra bahantoro shokoto sheblehenta raba. Lord, whatever sickness, whatever disease, whatever condition that they are having, Father God, neck pain, rib pain, hallelujah, shoulder pain, elbow pain, that kind of uh, sickness of skin disease, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, be healed this morning at the count of three, one, two, three, hallelujah Lord, there will be a healing manifestation Father God, there will be healing to there will be healing to the goiter there will be healing to the swelling in the body oh that suffering from pain that suffering from pain is is no more in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Libra Mahantarama. Thank you, Jesus. Heal. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Shablaka. You step and you heal my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. Yes, Lord, you are our healer. 
this morning in the name of Jesus hallelujah those of you who specially need the healing touch uh, just lift up your hand one more time i'm just as, as the lord sees amen the rest of you close your eyes uh, there's those people who need some kind of healing in your body yes lord all those hands you're seeing this morning ray broker to show you know what they need uh, healing off uh, in the name of Jesus we release the healing over them lord by faith they are healed lord hallelujah by faith they are healed inside out and father in this month of good gifts and as we enter into the new month this healing will manifest in jesus mighty name i pray hallelujah give the lord a big hand hallelujah thank you holy spirit lord right now we pray for everyone who is here every adults every children every uh, every elderly in the name of jesus we pray that god throughout this month you uh, you led us father god you will continue to lead us even as we step out into the new month lord we pray the grace that is grace above grace will come upon every children of yours father god we praise you we give you glory i pray for open doors i pray for opportunity i pray for continued favor over their life in jesus mighty name we pray and the people of god say, Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. Thank you Jesus. Let's all pray the benediction together. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you and the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and grant you peace. May the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all for now and forever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the